Hello. Close your eyes and start it off. All right, in advance, a question I know I'm going to get asked, um, you know, regarding, uh, you know, some of the some of the calls, specifically the end of the game uh, last week, went through our normal uh, review process. That's why I did want to comment on a few of the things that I wasn't educated on post-game. Um, you know, I had discussion on a number of calls in the second half. That was, you know, unfortunately for us, as part of part of the game, there was a, there was a number of misses there at the end. The, pass interference that was called, pass interference that wasn't called, the intentional grounding, and then certainly the last play, you know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of talk with the conference about that. Um, and basically, just to, to sum it up so we can all move on, um, you know, the explanation that we got on the last play was uh, that they, you know, believed uh, that the runner, or they thought that the runner had scored. Um, and they felt like that that was enough to overturn it. Um, I, I have no, I've not been given any explanation why we ignored the part of the rule um, that, that obviously state that, that to overturn something, all right, that, that it has to be absolutely, completely clear cut. There can be, there can be no, um, obviously no doubt about what happens. And, that part was ignored, which is unfortunate for us. Now, uh, we're moving past it. It's not the reason that we lost the game. We had plenty of other opportunities, and I'm not sitting here blaming the officials, uh, saying, well, you know, they did a bad job, and that's why we didn't win the game. It has nothing to do with it. It's part of football. It's part of road football. It's unfortunate, yes, uh, but obviously a lot of things that we uh, can do better and need to do better and expect to do better going forward. So, so, just to, so I wanted to address that. and. and that's that's out. To clarify that, did, did they tell you that they believe the ball crossed the plane, or just that they believed he scored? Uh, they told me that they that they they yeah, told me they believed that. he had scored, and and but there's you know there's just but when you get those sneak plays like that, nobody can see the ball. The first time that you see the balls, it's on the ground, and so you know when it came out, which they admit nobody knows when it came out, and that's the difficult part. I mean, it's one of those that I think you look back and say, if the call on the field would have been a touchdown. Like there's no way they're going to overturn it. I would have understood it. I probably wouldn't even have called them, to be honest. The touchdown, uh, obviously, or it being called short, you know, my opinion, like there's there's no way that that can be overturned. The rules are the rules are pretty clear, but we just uh, you know chose not to look at that part of it. So just to be clear, they did not say that there was indisputable video evidence. No, yeah, they, yeah, they agree. Yeah, okay. they agree that it's not indisputable. I mean, they agree, which is which is unfortunate because that's part of the rules. Um, but you know, but listen, it's I get it's a close play. Like I, I get it. And and did he score? Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. I mean, but that's the problem is nobody knows, and you're going to have to go back on what the officials call on the field. And so, you know, it's an unfortunate break. But there's a lot of things that led to that. Like there's, again, I'm not the person. I, I don't I don't make excuses. I don't allow our players to make excuses. I haven't talked about it with our players. I know I know everybody wants to just get our opinion on it so that we can all move on, and that's why I want to address it. But at the end of the day, like, you know, we, we had plenty of opportunities to, to close out that football game and not, not put it down to a fluke, a fluke play like that. Coach, with Eric Gentry's injury, is there any chance he might shirts this season? Uh, I think it's always a possibility, right? You can't, you know, you look across the country right now. I mean, there's, you never know. Uh, no, no final decision's been made. Uh, we're going to keep evaluating, you know, just how he's feeling and how he's progressing. He's, he's back with us uh, doing everything right now but the full practice, but he's already able to ramp up some of the um, physical activity. So um, ongoing, uh, but the adult, this day and age, I don't know that you can say, for sure, one way or another, it's just the way the rules are. Do you say he's, he's out indefinitely for the time being? Is there any timetable on it? Yeah, I, I mean, indefinitely is probably a good word right now. I mean, he's progressing quickly, so I don't, I don't know that I want to say like anything for sure. Um, it's just, it's, it's just kind of a day-to-day -day thing right now. But he's making great progress. Coach, uh, Woody Marks is averaging 122 scrimmage yards this season. Just what is the impact he's been for your guys' offense? He's well? done. He's, he's been. He's been exactly what we had hoped he'd been up to this point. He's been, I think, one of a steady veteran presence for us because we do have a lot of youth and, and new players around him. Um, he's ran the ball well. He's done a nice job in pass pro. Um, and then obviously he's been a factor in the receiving game as well. So I think he's going to keep getting better as he gets settled in with our guys, our linemen, our system, everything. I, I think he can still continue to improve, and I believe he will. But he's just a, a quiet, unassuming, hard worker, shows up every day. You can tell he's really motivated to play, and he's been a great teammate. So I, I can't say enough about him up to this point. With how well what he is, is running, does it make sense to lean on the run game? 
more often, especially down the stretch of games? No, no question. You know, we did a lot the other night. You know, we, we ran it a lot. We ran it well. It was good to see, you know, the, the, the rest of the group really do some good things in the run game. I know we talked about that some after the game, and that was, was important the other night, but it's obviously going to be really, really important going forward. And felt, felt like we took some great steps. And, no, that's, listen, the most fun most fun time to call plays is when you got a great running game. I mean, that's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot different. So it was good to see us take some steps. With the offensive line, what needs to happen to take that next step forward? I think we just got to continue to build on. I mean, I think we've had a few weeks here. We didn't play good against Michigan, uh, and again, I own a lot of that. I screwed us up in, in our silent count. Just we, 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 our linemen had some things working against them in their game, um, and obviously they weren't perfect. They had some things working against them in the game that were not their fault, that were mine. Um, we didn't play good in that game. Um, we were better against Wisconsin. We were better against Minnesota. Like we just, we got to stay on that trim. And if we keep doing that, these young dudes are going to get better. The cohesion is going to continue to grow. Like there's a lot of good things on that tape from the other night. And we, I think we'll continue to build on it. And, and um, so yeah, it's going to do that. And obviously we want our, our depth and our guys to keep to keep pushing them and obviously be ready uh, to sub in there and go as well. Lincoln, you made the, the point. You guys are a couple, feel like you guys are a couple plays away mm -hmm. from, from five and nine. Don't feel like it, we are. It, it, no. You said the same thing at times last year. Is it is it a concern at all to you that you guys haven't gotten to that point yet, where where you're not just a couple plays away and you're you're there? I mean, how do you approach ultimately being at that place? Uh, I mean, that's 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 part of college football. I mean, I think like job number one is you got to put yourself in position to win these games. Um, you know, we also had several games last year that we weren't really in position to win. Um, so that that's job number one. Um, and then obviously. Uh, as you keep progressing, you, you have a chance to win those and continue to put yourself in those positions. You grow, you get better. Hopefully, you continue to you start to separate in more games that maybe don't come down to one here or there. And that's just that's just part of the process. I mean, each year is different. Each schedule is different. Each, each challenge, each group of challenges are different. Um, but I mean, again, I just go back. There's there is massive progress on a lot of areas right now. That's that's pretty clear. So we're. Uh, you know, we're in the moment right now and getting ready for a big one this week. Is there any up, any update on Lake McCree? Uh, progressing well ahead of schedule, which is uh, which is uh, no shock considering him. He's a he, he's kind of a pro when it comes to this stuff. So yeah, uh, progressing much faster. Uh, I think we'll have him back sooner than later, which is great news for us. Thank you, Coach yeah. Riley. Right. Thanks, everybody.